So what a joy it truly is to be with you all back in this place. While we have been separated in physical ways, I do take great joy, great pride in the fact that our community has been able to remain connected in digital, but more importantly, in spiritual ways. And I do not think that it is by accident that our first steps together back into our worshiping community, back into our spiritual home, is the same day that we are called to remember the part of Jesus' life where he too began to return home. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Holy and gracious God, we give thanks for this time together to journey with you in this moment as we come back together and worship you in your beloved community. May your words inspire my words and become our collective words of your hope and justice and joy. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. Ooh. It's a little different up here, being able to look at you all. The energy in the room is palpable and exciting. I'm, I was done looking at that little computer screen trying to know if what I am saying even makes sense. But I know that there is truth in the scriptures and truth in the work that we do together. And so I am just grateful to be here with you all. It seems like just yesterday, but also 2,000 years ago, that people began to whisper. People get sick all the time. We interact with sick people all the time. Sometimes we knew it and sometimes we didn't. Sometimes on occasion we were told people were sick, hysterical even, just to avoid conflict or attempt to address the anxiety of the unknown. But either way, the rumors about the beginning of the end began. Now they had journeyed only to come back near Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives. And we have journeyed over two years on the digital corner of Park and East 85th, only now to find ourselves in the physical presence of the familiar red doors, having to ask ourselves, are we ready? Faith was never the issue. Faith has never been the issue. There was and is always faith. Faith that we had the tools that we need to go in and continue, but to continue anew. We collectively have been being a new version, a new vision of beloved community for quite some time now. But it's different when the physical proximity is gone, when that comfort is gone for so long. So we are left with the questions that sneak into our brain and sneak into our hearts when we are alone. Questions like, is this the right time? Am I safe? What is safe? Or rather, what is safe for me, for others, for us? We ask, what has changed? Or maybe we need to start asking, what hasn't changed? Or how about, will I know my way back? Because I am not the same, and you are not the same, and you are not the same. None of us are the same. We are not the same as the last time we gathered in this space. And we need to name that, and sit with that, and ask ourselves, who are we? We are beloved. We are Jesus's. We journey with each other and with our God. We are here. We are now. 
We are not the same, and we never really knew the answer, but Jesus always knew the answer, even when we are not so sure. And so we got our shots, we grabbed our palms, and we donned our masks. Excited trepidation filling the air. We've had more than a few conversations about this day. We have been talking about this day since the very beginning. And the assurance became, if anyone says anything to you, just say this, the son of woman needs them. Meaning, every safeguard, every conversation about the challenging things that are required of us in this time, that are required of us to feel safe, to be safe, we're always rooted in what Jesus requires of us. To love one another. To care for one another. To see God in one another. We see God in one another, and we know that there is truth prevailing. We know that that love is eternal and everlasting. We see God in each other, and we shout with conviction, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Holy One. And we continue to shout, blessed are we who continue to care for God through our love and for the safety of one another. And so we stand here today, albeit some of us a little more stable than others due to broken legs and broken hearts and broken spirits. But we are here, online and in person. We are here and we will shout Hosanna, church. Hosanna! People online, we are watching the chat and we hope that you are saying Hosanna too. And so I invite you now to grab your palm that was in your, on your chair and let's say it together. Let's say it three times, growing in spirit. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Friends, let's do it again. I can't hear you. I know you have masks. I know that we are muffled a bit, but let's do it. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. <sighs> we shout Hosanna, and friends, I have been waiting for that moment, for our voices to ring together for a really long time. I know that we've preached some sermons that require us to talk to each other, and there have been talkbacks, and I'm talking to my cats, and I'm talking to the computer, wondering if you are all shouting back with me. But to hear our voices ring together is a beautiful thing. Now, scripture goes on to say, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shook. And now, uh, neither the biblical authors, I'm pretty sure, nor the interpreter, the Reverend Will Gaffney, were using the word shook in the modern colloquial sense. I know that we hear this from back over here. We're just gonna keep going, it's all right. How many of you know that word shook as just kind of that, that way in which we use it today? Like, I am shook. I was shook when I came in here and saw all of you. I know it says that the crowds were shook and I am positive that that is not the intended way <laughs> that it was meant or written. But that modern colloquial sense, meaning incredible disbelief in what has happened, it feels right. I can only imagine that the crowds, that the people that were gathered to welcome Jesus back into community, the family, the lifelong friends, the people he had heard of but never even met, were indeed shook to see him return. You're supposed to be shook 
when you see Jesus return. Let me say that again. You are supposed to be shook. You are supposed to be like, I am shook, y'all. When you see and when you feel and when you experience Jesus' return. I think that's why I was overwhelmed as I saw each one of you logging in online and coming into the sanctuary this morning. It is overwhelming to be in the presence of the holy. This place, these people, us together, it's holy. But the more I think about it, the more I look out at you gathered here, faces I have longed to see in person for two years, and those online who continue to gather so faithfully, the more I imagine it's not just the crowds that are shook, but Jesus is too. Because even when we cannot, Jesus sees the holy, the sacred, the divine in each of us. It is why he returns to Jerusalem, to community, to us. I imagine Jesus sitting on his humble steed, making his way into town starting to pass the people, a woman on his right, some kids on his left, and the crowd grows slowly as he makes his way deeper into community. The distinct faces become less defined as the movement grows. And while they are clearly excited, Jesus probably takes more than one big, deep breath because he knows more of the story than they do. So he takes this dig, big breath, and I imagine he looks up and he catches the eye of someone. A woman he knew in his youth, maybe. A woman who maybe was born around the same time as him. A woman whose mother had maybe been a big help to Mary in the early days of her postpartum. A family whose story was so wrapped up in his own, even though they had been physically apart for years even. And they lock eyes, sharing a lifetime of stories in one moment's glance. And both of their shoulders drop, releasing tension that neither knew that they were holding. She is seen by the one who saves. He sees someone who helps hold the fullness of his story. He sees someone who he did not know he would ever see again, because pandemics are not new. She could have been lost to systemic poverty and hunger, like the stories he heard from the people he has fed along his journey and the people he sees in our time that continue with food insecurity. She could have been lost in childbirth, which was a danger then and is a danger now, especially for black and brown birthing people. And as we continue to oppress women's bodies, like what is happening to Lizella Herrera in Texas right now. This woman, this beloved of Jesus, may have been killed by the governing bodies and its enforcers because from the moment he was born and every moment since, Jesus has been saying black lives matter, black life matters, and has been calling us to do the same. 
so many ways out of her control, this woman could have missed this moment. And yet, and yet she is staring back at him. She made it. He made it. And friends, we made it. Which should leave us all a little shook. Because Jesus knows, and we know, not everyone made it. And we will carry them with us, just as we carry the stories of Jesus this week, and always. But we will also never again take for granted the opportunities to see Jesus return and shout Hosanna. So together, friends, once again, may we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he and blessed are we who gather in the name of our Lord. Amen and amen.